Hello and welcome to AE Accounting Tutorials. We are beginning a new series on accounting for branches, that is branch accounts. This topic is very broad, but I'll be taking you through the very key areas that you need to understand as far as branch account is concerned. In this particular video, I'll be taking you through the basic concepts of branch accounts, the various types of branches, the structure of branch, the relationship between head office and branches, and the format of branch accounts. So if you're new to this channel, I will encourage you to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notification bell so that any moment I upload any new video, you'll get notified on your devices. Now listen, let me take you through the basic concepts of branch accounts. In order for businesses to market their products over a very large territory and have effective and efficient retailing, businesses decided to generally split their business into branches and departments. In a case where the various divisions of the business are located under the same roof, okay, we call them departments. That is where within the, the same business or the same um, company, we have a place where they deal with footwear, other places they deal with uh, stationery, other places they deal with um, accessories. All those places are called departments because they are found within the same um, company or organization. Is that okay? That is department. And that is not what, what you are talking about here. We are talking about branches. That is where um, the various divisions of the business are located in different places. That is either in the same town or in different town or even in a different countries is that okay so basically that is the concept of branch account now in branch account we have two different parties we have head office and we have what we call the branch itself so i said we have head office and we have branch or the branches let's say we have branch now there are relationships that exist between this um, head office and branch. The head office, it is the center of the business. It is the origin. Um, it is where the business originally set up. Before they wanted to maybe increase their market shares and try to open a different um, branch elsewhere. So let's say this head office is into um, the sale of, let's say, clothes. Okay. Now, and this business is AE Limited, okay? AE Limited is in, is, is in dealing with clothes, right? And because they wanted to uh, market their product in large territory, they decided to open another branch elsewhere. Now, um, it is this particular head office that supplies all goods to the branch. Is that okay? But sometimes they are also allowed to make um, purchases from um, third parties is that okay but in most cases it is the head office that um, supplies or send goods to the branch okay after the branch makes sales of the goods the head office transferred what happened is that the branch also sent the money received from the sale of the goods to the head office so the cash is actually remitted The cash is remitted to the head office okay so the head office is allowed to open a local bank in the branch of which every sales will be deposited is that okay good and all expenses that are incurred by the branch are paid by the head office so all expenses all expenses are also paid by the head office expenses of the branch are paid by the head office so now let's look at the structure of the branch so um, I'll say structure okay I normally see the branch structure so in the branch structure we have domestic branch domestic branch and we have what we call foreign branch okay Now, domestic branch are branches that are located within the same country. For instance, in Ghana, when a head office is located in Accra and a branch is located in Kumasi, because Accra and Kumasi 
are all in Ghana. We call that a domestic branch. On the other hand, when we talk about foreign branch or foreign branches, it is where a head office is located in one country and the branch is located in a different country. For instance, we have a head office of a business located in Nigeria, in Abuja, okay? Then the branch is located in, let's say, Kenya, Nairobi. In that circumstances, we recognize that branch as a foreign branch because they are located in different or separate countries. Is that okay? That is that. So the domestic branch can be split into two. Okay, so we have what we call dependent branch. Dependent branch. Then we have independent branch. Okay, so these are the two basic types of branch. So when you are asked to state two types of branch, you mentioned dependent branch and independent branch. And I'll explain to you. So this fall under domestic branch. Now, dependent branch are branches that depends mainly on the head office. Is that okay? I said they depend on what we call head office. Okay, so what do I mean by they depend on head office? It means that um, they do not prepare their own set of books. It is the head office that prepares books on their behalf. This type of branches are on small scale. Okay, um, they, do, they are not large enough to um, open or prepare their own set of books. So it is the head office that prepares books on their behalf. Okay, with independent branch, they don't depend on the head office they do everything on their own is that okay they are allowed to prepare their own set of books such um, branches are on large scales they perform a, a lot of transactions so they kept their own set of books and i'll explain the books that they kept themselves now so under the dependent branch we have three different systems that are adopted under dependent branch the first system I would like to talk about is the debtors system. Debtors system, okay. And two, we have another system called inventory or stock and debtors system. Then the third method is final accounts final account system good so when we talk about debtor system under this particular system the head office prepares what we call branch account it is very simple they are only kept branch account but then i told you that for dependent branch they are not allowed to keep their own set of books. It is the head office that keep books on their behalf, prepares account on their behalf. So when they are using the data system, the head office will open one big account called branch account. Is that okay? And I will show you the format of the branch account right after this. Now, sometimes they are allowed to keep two different set of books for a reason. Sometimes they are allowed to keep a stock or inventory account. Zero king and two, they are also allowed to keep what we call debtors accounts. They are allowed to keep debtors accounts in a such a way that when head office allow the branches to sell on credits, okay, in that instances they will be allowed to keep what we call debtors or receivable accounts. Okay, this help them know the amount of money that the debtors are owing at a particular point in time. Good. And I mentioned of inventory account. They are also allowed to prepare what we call inventory account or stock account. This helps the branch to know the movement of goods that actually takes place in the branch. So the most important thing I want you to understand is that under the data system, the head office only open one big account called branch account. And I'll show you the format, okay? But they are also allowed to open two different side accounts. That is the data account and branch debtors account and branch inventories account that is that then we move to the stock 
and data system. This is quite complicated as compared to this. They are allowed to keep about um, six books of account. Is that okay? The account that are kept under the stock and data system, one account is branch inventory account. So um, let me list them here. Branch. So I'll say branch stock or inventory accounts. This is account. Then two, they are allowed to keep branch debtors or receivable accounts. They are also allowed to keep branch expense accounts or expenses account. This three and four, they are also allowed to keep branch stock adjustment account. And five, they are also allowed to keep branch profits or loss accounts. Good. And the last one is they are also allowed to keep goods, to prepare goods sent to branch accounts. Okay. This six accounts are kept under the stock and data system. And I'll take my time and explain every single transaction and the meaning of these six accounts. But let's hold on. And the final one is the final account system. Under the final account system, they prepare the complete set of accounts. They start from the journal, um, the trial balance, prepare their trading profit and loss account, their balance sheet, everything that is done under the final account system. Now, and this final account system also fall under the dependent branch. Now listen and listen good. Every foreign branches is independent branch is that okay we call that autonomous branch independent another name for independent branch means it's autonomous branch now every foreign branches prepares their own set of books so after understanding the structure of branch let's pick the first system which is data system where the head office will keep one big account called branch account and they will be allowed to keep two different set of accounts that is the branch inventory account to know the movements in goods and also when they make sales on credit then they'll be also allowed to keep branch debtors account to know the amount due debtors now i said the head office will open one big account called branch account okay the branch account so let's look at the format of the branch account how it works now let's look at the format of the branch account. Take note that this branch account is not opened in the book of the branch. It is rather opened in the book of the head office. We are saying that we are under the data system and in under the data system, it is the head office that keeps or prepares accounts of the branch. And the head office open one big account called branch accounts. So that is why we have to look at the format over here. But take note that this account is opened in the book of the head office is that okay good so to begin to record in this account the first thing to record are assets and liability all assets are debited to branch accounts in the book of the head office and all liabilities are credited this will be explained there is a reason so i say that i call this to balance the balance brought down okay so all these are opening balances okay opening balance of all assets good so opening balance of all assets to be recorded so let's say we have um building as an as a non-current asset we will record it over here is that okay if let's say we have stock 
the opening balance of stock will be recorded. Let's say we have debtors will be recorded. Okay. We have so many assets. You can mention any of the non-current assets. You can have furniture, victims, equipment, and, and, and what of you. You can have debtors, um, um, stock, we could have bank, we could have we could have um, prepaid expenses and all that. The opening balances should be debited to this account. On the other hand, opening balances of liabilities should be also credited. So I call that the buy balance. The buy balance brought down. This represents closing balance of all liabilities of all liabilities should be credited an example of liability could be um, creditors and we could have let's say outstanding expense or expenses owings okay so you record them here so you sum and bring the total. This one too, you sum it and bring the total. Now, one thing I just want you to understand that all assets, opening balances are debited, then um, opening balances of liabilities. Are, we are trying to find the difference between the assets and the liabilities. You know that the difference between assets and liability represents the owner's equity. That is the net worth of the branch. You know that Accounting equation states that assets is equal to equity plus liability. So if you are recording this at the debit side, asset at the debit side, um, liability at the credit side, we wanted to strike the difference, meaning that we will have equity equals assets minus liability. So the difference between these two will be the equity of the branch. That is the net worth of the branch. Is that okay? So that is the reason why we do that. On the other hand, you know, for the opening balances of the asset, asset has a natural debit balance. So if an asset has, let's say, a balance of $500, then this is for the head of his right, and we wanted to transfer this to the branch. To close this account, we need to come and write branch 500 to close this account then the corresponding entry will be at the debit side of branch accounts. Is that okay? Good. The same apply to liabilities. Liabilities also have a natural credit balance. Let's say the balance is 400 as balance brought down. We wanted to transfer this from the head office to branch. Now to transfer this, we will have branch here, 400. Then we close this account then the corresponding entry will be at the credit side of branch account so that is why you are seeing this entry i hope this is clear good the next thing to talk about here is goods sent to branch account so i have another two item so to goods sent to branch account so goods sent to branch will also be recorded at the debit side. Is that okay? The double entry for goods sent to branch is that we credit the goods sent to branch account and debit the branch account. That is why you are seeing the debit entry over here. Now, after recording the goods sent to branch at the debit side of branch account, the next thing to record is expenses paid by head office on behalf of the branch. So. I said to bank because the expenses will be paid from bank. So this represents expenses paid by A2, that is head office. This expense could be rent, it could be general expense, it could be electricity, it could be wages and salaries, plenty. So you write them at the debit side, okay? So that is that. So after recording the expense, the next thing to record is the proceed or the sale of goods. The goods that is sent to the branch, 
the cash that is received on the sale of these goods. So these sales could be in two different ways, either through cash sales or credit sales. So I'll have another by bank because when the sales is made, the cash will be remitted into the local bank of the head office. So if there is a cash sales, it will be recorded at the credit side. If it is a cash, a cash collected, cash collected from debtors, from credit sales, it will also be recorded. Then the total will be recorded. But take note, I did not write a credit sales over here. A credit sales could be 10,000 for the period, but the cash collected from debtors at the close of the period could be, let's say, 7,000. In recording, you have to record the 7,000, the cash actually collected from debtors, not the total uh, credit um, sales. Is that okay? Good. So after recording this, the next thing to also consider is returns. Sometimes when the goose is sent to the branch by the head office, the branch may return some back to the head office due to several reasons. So when that happened, you have to record the returns at the opposite side of the goods sent to branch to reduce the goods sent to branch balance. Is that okay? So we will have by goods sent to branch account. And this will represent a return. Return to HO head office then we have to record that as well. Now, after recording this, the last thing to do is to transfer the opening balances of the assets and the opening balances of the liability to the opposite side of the account. Now, all the opening balances of the liabilities at the credit side of the branch account will be debited as closing balance of liabilities. Is that okay? So I will have to. This two balance will represent um, a closing balance. Okay. Closing balance. So this will represent an opening balance instead. Okay. So opening balance of liability. Not closing. So opening balance of liability will become a closing balance of a liability. Good. Now, this opening closing balance is the balance CD. Okay. So it is the balance CD. Now, we are just transferring. So we have creditors. Then we have outstanding. expenses okay then we record these two balances then we bring the total good then the opening balances of the assets will be recorded at the credit side as closing balance of assets but note if the asset is a non-current asset you make sure you record the depreciated value Okay, when I talk about the depreciated value, I'm talking about the net book value or the current amount of the asset. If the opening balance of this asset, if the asset is a non-current asset, if there is any accumulated depreciation, make sure you subtract the accumulated depreciation from the non-current asset, then you record the depreciated value or the current amount of the asset or the net book value. So I'll have by the buy balance and make sure this balance is the balance CD. Okay, I'll put in brackets a closing balance of assets. So we just have to repeat this asset building stock data. So building, we have stock, we have data. They record we record the three then we add them 
all right the total good so after recording this we just have to balance off the account or close the accounts now if the credit side of the account is bigger than the debit side of this account the difference is profit is that okay so we call it a branch profit so the profit on the branch branch profit branch profit so a branch profit will be recorded this will found will be found in the general profit and loss account so if the debit side of this account is bigger than the credit side then the difference or the balance cd will be a branch loss then this will be found in the general profit and loss account so after that the account must close on its own the account must close on this on its own okay so basically this is the format of branch account in our next video we'll be taking a full practice question on how to record transactions in a branch account afterwards then we look at the stock plus um, debtors system that is where the six accounts will be opened and that will be explained into detail so if you haven't subscribed to this channel you make sure you subscribe to join our channel thank you very much